Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello friends and neighbors, welcome to this audit of the document known as Task Force Sheepdog. Published November 11th, 2016. I mentioned this document and actually went over a little bit of it in a recent live stream that I did, which is in my members only section. If you want to check out that live stream in its entirety, go ahead and become a member of the channel. Uh, choose Tier 2, which is Loyalist and Contributors. And you can gain access to that. The initial live stream was free to the public, by the way. Uh, just the replay is in the members section. So in that brief cursory audit, I mentioned that I was going to go over it in a screen sharing method so that you, the viewer, can see what I'm looking at. And now you can. So as you can see right here, I've downloaded this document, which is available online for anybody who wants to download it. You see the 1 by 1.9 flag up here. Now, those of you who are familiar with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel Miller in 1988. That flag, that particular ratio of flag is the title for flag the flag of the land during the time of the contract the correct sentence structure flag but as you can plainly see here even someone who has no closure on the grammar can quite obviously see that none of this is correct sentence structure it's not even close it doesn't even have the appearance of it or a vague similarity to it you have task hyphen force hyphen sheepdog but what's that except for a compound pronoun? There's no positionals or lodials. There's no closure to the flag or what the flag is. That's not a grammar flag. Because number one, it has no closure. And number two, there's no correct grammar on this page. So this is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Filled with modification. Now, someone might say, oh, Jason, why don't you syntax it? What is the point? The individual who wrote this, I'm pretty sure, knows what they were doing and that they were, that their volition was not to be correct. In a grammatical sense, quite obviously. So this, it says right there, un- classified. So you have UN that means no, plus it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word it means no, and then you have class, if, and then I, ED is at the end, it's a past tense, suffix condition is state. So that is a no contract word, 
doesn't mean anything. This is directed towards the U.S. Special Operations Forces, Forces and Militia of the United States of America. Now, what is that? United. The U in front of the N means no, and it's also past tense. So the subject is the operational attempt to stop the illegal takeover and surrender of the 50 sovereign nation states of North America, known as the United States of America. Now that is a part of North America. Canada is also a part of North America. Am I right? Also, think about what those words mean. The operational attempt to stop the illegal takeover. Illegal. So, the author has put the jurisdiction in legalese. The legal system. The fiction system. That's where they've put the jurisdiction of this document. 50 sovereign nation states. So, they're worried about a takeover. So something else is going to take over the sovereign nation states. Now, is each state sovereign? I don't think so. I don't think so because a sovereign has to be able to produce their own money, their own food, their own fuel, their own transportation, land. Each of those states doesn't do that. They use the currency provided by the Federal Reserve. So that's one strike. There is no such thing as a sovereign state, at least not in this sense. And they're worried about an illegal takeover. They put it in the legal system. So they're worried about someone taking over what's already been taken over when the, we'll call them settlers, came over and took over North America from the people that already existed and lived here? Displaced them? Committed genocide to one or more races? And stole the land and the resources and everything? Just basically took over? Is it, is it, what's the difference? I guess what goes around comes around, folks. It's called karma. Anyways. So the objective of this report is to explain and demonstrate to both members of U.S. military and people of the United States that there is an attempt to secretly and illegally take over and quietly surrender the United States of America back over into the hands of the British crown. Prove beyond any shadow of a doubt to the members of the U.S. military and to the people of the United States that the attempt to take over and surrender the nation to the British crown is illegal in an act of absolute fraud, and in so doing, show them that their prayers to God to save this nation have been answered. What about the prayers of the natives that already existed here? How were those prayers answered? Probably the same way your prayers are going to be answered. Overall outline, the individuals and activities of the entities that will be identified and discussed within this report are royal family members, tribe of Dan, Empire of the Three City-States, New World Order, Unclean Spirits. Oh my goodness, so we're going into biblical stuff. And the American warriors at the very tip of the spear who stand in opposition of the tribe of Dan, Federal Postal Judge, Postmaster General, Commander-in-Chief Russell J. Gould, and his accomplice, witness, and global corporate, corporate government partner, Federal Postal Judge David Witt Miller, self-appointed American common law judge Anna Von Reitz, a member of the 11th and 7th SIOC groups. For my name is, I am a ninth generation American and an American war fighter. As a patriot and descendant of whom both great-grandfathers on both sides of my family tree fought alongside and under the military command of General George Washington. During the American Revolutionary War, I can assure you that I have been ever vigilant in my watch over this nation as my family's heir to this great responsibility. So this individual, whoever wrote this, they redacted their name. Why? They want to appear as honorable, but yet not so honorable as to 
stand in honor beside their own words? What's wrong with this picture, folks? But they're claiming a pedigree that their great-grandfathers fought beside General George Washington, who was part and parcel to the genocide of the Native Americans that lived here in North America. So again, I ask you, what's the difference between what this guy is worried about and what the Natives were worried about back then? And what's the difference between what the alleged hostile individuals who are coming to legally, illegally, sorry, take over the U.S., what's the difference between them and his great-grandfathers and George Washington and all those people? What's the difference? I don't know what the difference is. Their religious beliefs, maybe? Anyways, let's check out, let, let's try and find some clues as to who wrote this thing. Because they don't want to credential themselves. They don't want to step up onto the carpet and take accountability for themselves. So we got to kind of guess. Sergeant Leroy Horton. You may all know him from the War Castles series, of which I think the very initial first video of War Castles features him prominently. I have communicated with this man. He reached out to me via email a few years ago. Nothing to speak of there. I mean, it was uh, amicable communication, friendly. The interesting thing about this guy is that there's just not that much out there to be able to certify that he's actually in the military. Now, this this is not Sergeant Robert Horton. This is Major Robert Horton. He passed away in 1944. So as you can see, there's just no real proof of him being in the military. Now, I will say based upon my communications with him and based upon video evidence that I've seen of him speaking, he very much carries himself as a military individual. It's just very strange that we cannot really find any evidence of him being in the military on the internet. This is about the closest thing right here that I can find. 2018 from the Courier Sons of the American Revolution We see down here some photos. The photo shows the new members, Robert Leroy Horton and Nathaniel Victor Carlson. Robert Leroy Horton was born in Lodi, California on August 31st, 68, and he currently lives in Lodi. He spent his childhood in Lodi and graduated from Lodi High School and Thomas Edison State University in Trenton, New Jersey, studying in radiation physics and radiation production. You know who else is from Lodi? Nick Diaz and Nathan Diaz. He's married to Pamela McGee. He's a radiological technologist with surgical staff incorporated a private contractor. He served as sergeant in U.S. Army as a psychological operations warfare specialist. Very similar to Scott Bennett. From 99 to 2012 in the United States Special Operations Command, United States Army Civil Affairs and Psychological Operations Command. His hobbies include running counterterrorism and counterinsurgency scenarios with a group of current and former military men and working with local law enforcement agencies in his education efforts to keep them sharp. His application to join the Sons of American Revolution was approved on February 2nd, 2018. 
His Patriot ancestor, Alexander Scott Sr., served as a private in Virginia and also served as a spy at the Siege of Yorktown. I think we can connect that back to this paragraph. So the evidence leans towards Sergeant Robert Horton as the author of this document. For I am a former U.S. Armed Forces Special Operations Soldier and an elite member of the Psychological Operations Regiment of the U.S. Army Special Operations Forces Community, 99 to 2012. 99 to 2012. Okay, we have credentialed and gotten closure on who the author of this document is. Why he wouldn't want his name in here in the public? Why he wouldn't want to stand by his words? That's a mystery. PSYOP Capability Brief. Psychological operations warfare is the tip of the spear in the highest echelon of military warfare in the world whose mission... Whose mission? See, as a former copy editor, I see whose mission? W-H-O apostrophe S. It would be W-H-O-S-E. But that's neither here nor there. But as a former English major and grammatician, these things are going to pop out at me. Mission objectives are to conduct, amongst many other things, planned operations to convey selected information and indicators to a specific demographic or target audience in order to infiltrate, to change, persuade, and or influence the emotions, motives, objective reasoning, and ultimately the personal behavior of any target audiences, foreign or otherwise, on a planetary scale if need be in an effort to control every town, city, state, government, organization, group, or individuals, from their religious groups to their corporations all the way down to their clubs and or their teams in an entire country, nation, or region of the hemisphere of this planet in association and cooperation with the U.S. State Department, host nation, and commander-in-chief's overall objectives. For this is my official military report and a personal account of what I have come to know and understand as not just the truth, but the facts that are being withheld from the military and the American people of the great nation. Facts that will nullify, again, facts, why is that have an apostrophe on it? That will nullify every law and every last tyrannical piece of legislation that has been illegally introduced and rammed down the throat of the nation since 99, thereby setting the entire country free and ending the orchestrated de degradation of the United States of America once and for all. And this is the orchestrated degradation that was built upon the orchestrated degradation of the natives that lived here before that? All right, so... <clears throat> This country has, since 2nd November 99 to current day, been in a state of martial law. I agree. I agree. But that's not when it started. It started a long time ago. That my evidence of that is the very fact that we have to have licenses and permits to do anything. That is evidence of martial law. Anyways. Folks, the most important thing that I'm trying to convey to you here is this guy says, for I am a, this is Sergeant Robert Horton, for I am a former U.S. Armed Forces Special Operations Soldier, an elite member of the Psychological Operations Regiment. So he's a former U.S. Armed Special Forces Operations Soldier. And... He, keep in mind, he doesn't say former here. He just says an elite member of the Psychological Operations Regiment. So that implies that he still currently holds that title. And then he goes into his job uh, description in Section A. And B, there, the Psychological um, U.S. Army Special Forces Special Operation Forces Community, 
the Psychological Operation Regiment, their volition is to modify behavior and mindset of their targets, foreign or otherwise. Meaning, of course, everyone is foreign to one another, but in this context, they mean foreign as in outside the U.S. or otherwise, which would be inside the U.S., meaning you and I. That's their volition to modify behavior in accordance with what they want you to think. And it went into the whole thing about religion and everything else. From what you wear, what you buy, what you speak, what you believe in. It's all pretty much coming from these people. And now as you can see, well maybe you can't see it, but I certainly can see it. And I'm not, I am not going to go through the rest of this because... It is a lot of BS. And it has to do with, I think, modifying the behavior of those and the mindset of those reading it. Just as it sort of minimizes David Wynn Miller's role in everything, and, and Horton gives the credit, the lion's share of the credit to Russell J. Gould and kind of relegates David Wynn Miller to being sort of a a side man, when really it was the direct opposite. If you look at any video, any director's party, even director's parties where David Wynn Miller was not physically there, Russell J. Gould defers to David's authority. It's clear to see who was in charge, who was the mastermind, who was the master, who was the student, who was the apprentice. This, as per his job description, Horton is trying to modify the behavior and the mindset of those who read it into thinking that Russell is the guy and that David is just some little subplot, I guess. So here's some uh, flag protocol. And this comes from Army Regs 840-10, by the way. You can look that up and get a free PDF on the internet. Anything that stands above the flag itself in its position attached to the top of the flagpole suspends the contract or the standing of the flag itself. A spire on the flagpole lets you know that you are in a military court-martial venue and declaring a state of war against the people. Friends and neighbors, if you go look at Last Flag Standing, the website of Russell J. Gould, and you look at the flag he uses on his document, contract, postal vessel court venues, you will notice that the 1x1.9 flag has a spire on the top of it, which means it's a state of war against the people. And it suspends the contract or the standing of the flag itself. And it lets you know that that is not a correct sentence structure flag, which is obvious because the grammar that Russell J. Gould uses is not correct and has mistakes all over it. But he's at war with the people. An eagle wingtips are up on the flagpole means you're in a presidential venue. A phoenix wingtips pointed down shows you're in a Vatican banking uh, venue. A ball means recruiting, con recruiting contracts, the draft, um, such things as that. Yellow flint Fringe denotes that you are in an international jurisdiction of admiralty and maritime law of the sea. Corporate flag. Despotic man-made laws of the Vatican. For a fact, the IRS claims that they work for the U.S. Treasury. The U.S. Treasury is under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Post Office. The Post Office is responsible for all 3,850 branches of government. Because the post office, when established on 22nd October 1871 in an act of global warfare, captured the entire world and all vessels in it in an effort to command and control all commerce of planet Earth. Wow, that's the exact same thing that Russell J. Gould claims. Isn't that interesting? Again, that word capture. It's an act of warfare. He just said it. And war negates contract. All right. I'm not going to get into all this BS here. You're more than welcome to go look it up yourself. 
It's even got Anna Von Reitz in it with her whole shtick. Interesting side note to this story. A while ago, I think 2016, don't quote me on this, Kerry Cassidy on Project Camelot was supposed to have Russell J. Gould, Sergeant Robert Horton, and Anna Von Reitz on her program. They were supposed to be working together. And then at the last minute, Horton and Gould canceled. They just canceled. They didn't show up. They didn't perform on their part of the contract and left Anna Von Reitz there. And there's a lot of sour grapes there from back then. And I do go into that in other videos. And it just, you know, shows everyone's true colors. Let's put it that way. That's my perception anyways. Long story short, due to particular banking laws, a nation is only to be allowed three international bankruptcies before itself stands in a position ready to be captured, seized. Okay, so these are all fiction bullshit balderdasheries. <laughs> due to particular banking laws, whose banking laws are those? Sergeant Horton. The bankers? The banksters? What law, where are these laws coming from? Who allows a nation three international bankruptcies before the nation itself is ready to be captured, seized, taken over? These are all very warlike terms, and war negates contract. And these is all, this all comes from the fiction system. You see what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's a mother frickin' circus. I said frickin'. Look at this mishmash of BS. How long is this thing? I did read this at one point in time. Anyways... In the end, it says, let the wolves make no mistake. I am the guardian of the flock for the good shepherd. And as I may, I walk amongst sheep. Will make no mistake that I am the sheep dog and a vicious guardian for this nation. Ooh, that sounds very fierce and patriotic and whatnot. But if you go a little bit deeper, if you dig a little bit deeper, you think about it on a psychological aspect. What are sheep? Sheep are corralled. They're owned. They're resources ready to be sheared and slaughtered when their time comes. And the sheepdog, which Horton is uh, given an analogy of himself to a sheepdog, is just someone protecting someone else's property or imagined property from other wolves that might want to eat those sheep. Same shit, different day. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. However, if you don't want to participate with any of this dramatic BS, which it is, it's psychological warfare, folks. He outlined it to you, exactly what his job is, is to get you riled up, play on your emotions so you can be controlled. If you're sick of that, thankfully, there's correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, which relies on three principles. Maintenance of rule one, rule equal, position of peace and neutrality, and the balance of the honor and the grace. If those are things that interest you, if you're sick and tired of war and warlike attitudes and things like that, you want to go a different route, you want to be autonomous, you don't want to be part of the sheep that this guy claims to protect, you want to be outside of that, and be your own person, be your own man or woman, well, Check out correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. On this very channel, you will find almost 900 videos of grammar knowledge where you can start your journey. Thank you very much for watching.
If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.